In this lesson, moving forward, I'm going to talk about various network tools, physical tools that are required within the networking industry, such as the crimping tool, the wire cutters, cable testers, and so on. Some of the basic tools for twisted pair cables, whether it's UTP or STP, are displayed. So for example, we have the crimper here, we have the wire cutter, the cable tester for example, and then of course the wire stripper as well. So these are the basic tools that are required if you need to make cables. Typically when you go to a store for example or you order a roll of cable, let's say the UTP cable category 5 for instance, they'll give you a length of cable, right? So let's say 100 meters, 200 meters, depending upon your own requirement, the size of your network. So once you get the cable, it's essentially a raw cable. You need to take the ends of the cable and then use these tools to make those connectors or connect the RJ45 connectors, for instance, so that they can be plugged into your computer, your laptop, or your network switch, hub, or servers. So the patch panel and RJ45 jack. A network patch panel is simply a mounted hardware device that includes a number of ports that enable the local area network interconnections and management. So this is just like basically a device, a physical device that has various jacks, right? And this is where you can plug in all the cables. So one cable goes to the computer, for example, and then one would end up with the patch panel. The RG45 jack, on the other hand, it's an 8-pin, eight 8-position eight plug or jack is commonly used to connect computers onto Ethernet-based local area networks. So this is the actual end of the wire which connects or has this particular jack called RJ45 and simply plugs in, pops into your laptop or computer on one end. And on the other end, it'll go either to the switch hub or finally to the servers as well. So the RJ45 connector, the tools that are required to make the RJ45 or the connections between the patch panel and the RJ45 jacks include simply a cutting tool, wire stripper, punch down tool, and a device or testing device known as the continuity tester, which simply tests that all of the pins of the connection one by one. So since there are eight pins, once you make the cable using the crimper tool, for example, then you can plug it into the device and it will test each pins for active electrical connection or not. So let's talk about attenuation. A few additional concepts, but they're important once you work with cables and you start connecting those cables on your network, you need to be watchful of attenuation. So the quantity of information reaching the receiver as compared to the transmitted quantity of information. So for example, the data goes through the cable and what happens is some of the data is lost or the speed is reduced. So that's what we mean by the quantity of information. It's typically measured in decibels with the symbol dB. According to the IEEE standards, 802.3 standard, twisted pair cables can be run 100 meters. So what that means is once the length of a twisted pair cable reaches 100 meters, anything beyond 100 meters, you will have some kind of attenuation which is essentially a loss of signal. So beyond this, the signal degrades to such a point that it cannot be interpreted by the destination host and you start losing your data packets and so on. So the rule of thumb is basically 100 meters of cable. After that, you will lose the signal. And there are other factors that also fall within attenuation and I'll talk about that next. Interference, anything that disrupts or modifies a signal that is traveling along the cable wire. So electrical sources, for example, lights, outlets, motors, appliances, anything that is run on electricity and is near your STP or UTP cable rather, you will find not only interference but also attenuation as well. 
So copper cable and network devices should be kept away from these electrical devices. And that's important to remember. And cables at all possible. And that's why we typically see modified boxes that contain your network cables or devices, patch panels that is kept separately from your electrical devices. The EMI or also known as the electromagnetic interference. This disturbance can affect electrical circuits, devices and cables due to electromagnetic conduction and possibly radiation. Any type of electrical device can cause EMI. So TVs, air conditioning units, motors, unshielded electrical cables and so forth. So copper based cables for instance and network devices once again should be kept away from these electrical devices and cables to prevent any network communication issues, attenuation or interference. So in this lesson I just wanted to talk about different network cabling tools and a couple of concepts to be watchful of while you're doing your cabling on your network. So I hope this helps. Let's move to the next lesson.